Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live stage performance here in Las Vegas for SaaS Innovate 2024. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, with my co-host and co-founder Dave Vellante, extracting the signal noise. We're back here with another SaaS partner conversation. Gavin Day, EVP, Executive Vice President with SaaS, and Dippy Burkhardt, CUBE alumni, Vice President, <laughs> General Manager, Fabric Strategic ISVs, Azure, Databricks, and AppDev Dev, Microsoft. A That's the longest <laughs> title I've ever heard. You got a lot going on, and we're, we're going to we get do. into it. And, and, you have really interesting background from a startup that came into Azure. We're gonna, that's really relevant. Gavin, great to see you again. As well, thank you. All right, so let's talk about the, the SaaS-Microsoft relationship. Let's set the table, give us a brief overview, and then we'll dig in. We'll dive in. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> uh, been strategic partners for four years. That was after kind of exhaustive research that we did with, with all of the cloud providers. And first decision was um, Azure is our strategic cloud provider. We run SaaS internally on Azure, and second of all, you know, we, we moved SaaS Cloud for our customers into Azure and then brought our products into the Azure marketplace. So, you know, really it's been a, a four year partnership of, you know, build it and then, you know, go to, to market together. And, and one of the things we've said a lot about this partnership is that we're better together and, and we're, we're meeting our customers where they are. It's been really, really exciting for us the last couple of years. Dipti, you mentioned that they were a design partner. I'm not sure if that's public information or is that confidential? Right. Now, it's, I guess it's out there now, but <laughs> Um, can you describe what that means and specifically what, why and when and the timing of the importance of that and what are you designing in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first thing, thank you so much for running on Azure. <laughs> we, we appreciate it. It's a very deep collaboration that we have um, and as part of our uh, Microsoft Fabric uh, platform, which is a truly open platform, uh, we have had SaaS participate with us as a design partner uh, from the early days. In fact, uh, last year at Ignite, uh, we introduced this uh, and announced this and uh, we'll be sharing more over the next uh, several months. So explain Fabric a little bit more, because you're unifying all your tools under a single environment. Yes. And I, want to, I have some follow-up questions on how you're handling multiple models or versus single models and what the future of apps looks like. Absolutely. So Fabric is an end-to-end -end unified uh, analytics platform, right? Uh, it brings together the power of Power BI. Uh, Azure Data Factory, our uh, Synapse Warehouse, uh, Lake Houses, and so much more, real-time analytics, in a single unified platform where the foundation is one lake. One lake is uh, what brings together the, the data and it's open formats, and so no longer do you have walled gardens of data, it truly is open. Your data could be in Azure, of course, but it might be in other clouds, and it comes together in one lake, and all of these workloads run natively on top. So that's what uh, Microsoft Fabric enables, a you know, seamless software as a service experience for data analysts, data scientists, all the way to business users. So very wide range of personas, all being able to get a lot more with their data. And Fabric unifies the metadata models Absolutely. as well, correct? They're not metadata in goes with the data, yeah. uh, it's a big part of it. Uh, whether it is, um, you know, it's, it's files in one lake, whether they're tables, uh, all of this is uh, in, we use our Delta Parquet, Delta Lake format, which is completely open. Uh, and so you can run other, uh, other workloads on top of one lake as well. What's the strategy as, I mean, first of all, I love the open, want to get into that, dive into the lake, if, we, if you will. Yes. Um, Databricks, last event they had, really changed the game in our opinion. We've reported on that when they started to open up the formats. They're like, wait, wait, we just want to move faster. We don't want all this thing. Snowflake made the market. But you have this now next gen, data lake, new way to get insights out of data. What's, what's the differentiation for Microsoft? What's the core strategy? Should it be open to integrate in, seamless integration? What's the core differentiator that you guys are putting forth? Absolutely, right? Open is really important for us, uh, and there's many forms of open, right? There's open formats, which is, uh, we've started off with one, right? We're, we, we will do more in the future. There's open source projects we're already involved with, uh, like uh, uh, Xtable. Uh, the, and, and then there's open, open uh, APIs, uh, T-SQL, uh, KQL, 
all of these well understood APIs that anyone can integrate into, and then the open platform. And that's where SaaS comes in uh, as a, a partner to really uh, bring in a native experience along with our other Microsoft workloads. So we have uh, you know, Power BI and uh, our warehouse and lake house, and we'll have um, the SaaS decision builder as a native experience, uh, which we'll uh, be talking about right now. So this is what I want to ask you about, because <laughs> yeah. you know, when you, when you, as an analyst, you try to squint through this stuff and you say, okay, looks like Microsoft is going to one model, maybe two models, whether it's OpenAI or Mistral, and then you see, you mentioned Databricks, they seem to be trying to build applications with multiple models. Now you got SaaS Decision Builder, and this is, this is multiple models now, and so I'm trying to, uh, trying to connect the dots, <laughs> what the future of applications look like, because I, I want to access multiple models, maybe you could help us understand that. Yeah, you know, for us, it's, it's the freedom of choice for our customers, mm -hmm. right? And, and we get to questions a lot about, you know, um, SaaS and Microsoft and, and the other partners and competitive, like, Listen, we're all competitors and friends at the same time. That's all cool. And for us, <laughs> it's giving the optionality to our customers and bringing the power of SaaS technology into Microsoft Fabric so our customers have the ability to choose. And intelligent you know, SaaS um, decision builders built on top of SaaS decisioning, which we're, we're, we're powering you know, banks around the world where all of their credit lending decisions are going through intelligent decisioning. So for us, it brings together business users, application users, and programmers to bring business rules and logic and AI models and deploying them into composite AI. So we're, we're really excited about this one. I okay. mean, no one, gets, no one wants to get locked in. The optionality reminds me of the old interoperability days, Dave. Remember that back in the day? Oh, we got to be interoperable, heterogeneous. It truly is that now because there's so much at stake. Absolutely. Okay, give me, then you compete on the clouds. <laughs> and, and for us, it, it, it's, it's the optionality of customers using the technology that's fit for purpose for them. Sometimes it's standalone SaaS, sometimes it's SaaS within Azure, and we're, we're, we love that. That's All right, right. integration is a huge topic. You guys talk about it a lot. I know in the cloud, when you get the cloud, now you have cloud on-premise and edge. It's cloud architecture, it's cloud operations. AI is going to certainly do a lot there. Again, we've talked about this a lot in the past in theCUBE. Open data lakes, DevSecOps, it's all driven by data. If data doesn't have the SLA, it doesn't, it's not relevant. So you need access to all the data. That's right. So I like this idea of open lake because it, it facilitates the idea that let's not create a, a bottleneck or a constraint on getting data to a place where you can architect it for the workload that you need. Yeah. Okay, and then get all the right data and, and re rethink that. So we, we think that re, this flips the script. Yeah. yeah. Gen AI flips the script on how you think about data architecture. Absolutely, like in this gen AI era, uh, you have to have open data, right? Because data becomes the foundation of these models. Uh, and once you have that open foundation, uh, you can then run a variety of engines, models on top of it. Uh, and it could be one of our Microsoft core workloads uh, with you know, Power BI or our lake houses or you know, Spark or, and, and so on. It could be our partners who are, uh, we're, you know, bringing in uh, to in have build native experiences on a single platform, so that our joint customers, our users, uh, can get more from their data in a very easy way. You know, you don't need a PhD in this. You drag and drop. Uh, you use a, you know native language to uh, write SQL, build dashboards, uh, make, make the best decisions uh, for from your data. Okay, so you're. Obviously, open. You've got to you got to have optionality for for customers. You, as we said, Microsoft's ubiquitous, so you're gonna you're a platform for everything. Okay, and but things are changing so fast. This is why you have to be open. So two years ago, nobody was even half the people didn't even know what Iceberg was. Now all of a sudden, that's the only thing that Snowflake and Databricks can agree on, and it's forced <laughs> them both to sort of uh, change the strategies, right? So, so that's, and you you, you kind of indicated. Well, you talked about Delta. You said other tables are coming. I presume Iceberg is. Is part of that, so and there, <laughs> there'll be others in the future, right? So yeah. you've got to have this. Remember, Unix used to be open systems, right? Yeah, so no, because the it's definition it's evolves. <laughs> but that's now right. it's really we've I think achieved what I think we have an understanding of what open is, and that's around optionality. You guys yes. agree with that scenario? Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. I think uh, the way we think about it, uh, we want it to be completely open from a format's perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, interop is what it is. Right, X table is is for interop, and then even for compute, uh, there are different engines that uh, may run different types of workloads on the same data. 
right? On the same data, you can have different insights, uh, better insights that you can drive. And we pull in our, uh, our partners and, um, and, and SaaS being one of them because we want to have a very rich uh, set of capabilities for our customers, right? We won't be able to build it all, and, uh, and that's where we have to have this uh, ISV ecosystem, wide ecosystem, uh, where we can all innovate together uh, for the better of our customers. And, and integration is key there, that brings integration, I won't even say challenges, it's really opportunities, that's but as right. long as you put the resource in, the engineering yes. resource, and it's not just a... Yeah, and we are, we are yeah. collaborating together, um, you know, uh, very closely. Uh, in the next, uh, we have our uh, Microsoft build coming up in a couple of months, and uh, uh, stay tuned, you know, there's going to be, a, uh, we might have some uh, good, good things to show there. Well, there's always uh, a lot of announcements yeah. at build and ignite, and you know, I mean, it's just <laughs> better to attend the build show or ignite? It's hard to choose between two, build two good shows. Build. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of That's cloud developers. Yes, so Build is a developer conference, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Um, it's, it's builders, right? And, uh, and honestly, this is an era where uh, developers are building very new kind of applications. Uh, increasingly, these applications are smart applications, uh, obviously with Gen AI plugged in, with more analytics that, are, that is plugged in, uh, and we have all the platforms together with our partners to, to give them that foundation uh, to innovate on top of. There's a lot of developer content at Ignite, too. Absolutely. I mean, there is. I mean, Absolutely. The, the, right? A lot of new innovations coming and so, announcements. What I love about the cloud game right now with Gen AI, it's very entrepreneurial, even in the big companies. And we've had a riff on theCUBE many times, on the, certainly on theCUBE pod. I know we've debated it multiple times, Dave, about you know, um, how this generation of entrepreneurship is changing because this is the first big wave of entrepreneurship, in my opinion. People could debate, go on Twitter, I'm happy to debate this, but I feel it's true. Where the cloud players are at full scale capacity in terms of utility, not full scale as in they, they can't do anymore, but yes. they are a major presence in the factors of how startups will go. Now, now Amazon was there day one, just kind of by accident on purpose, they had a big retail, and so the alternative was build a data center or go to this cloud with some console. Now it's actually a major part of the startup ecosystem. Yeah. So low code, no code, workbench, Data, workflows, and now the intellectual property, that's clearly coming out of this CUBE event here and, and others, that the workflow and the data is the IP, yeah. and the scale is going to be a resource. So, how do you guys see this creating value on behalf of the customers? Because at the end of the day, entrepreneurs are, are they see opportunity, you've been a co-founder uh, of a company, and, and so when you see opportunity recognition, you can seize it faster. And that's the end game, that's what we're talking about here. It's, it's the, I think, keeping up with the pace of change, right? And it, it's cliche, but the time to value is, is shrinking exactly. daily for our customers. And one of the things you heard this week that's so important to us is, you mentioned open, right? There was, for a long time, there was a perception of SaaS being a very closed language. And, and what you continue to hear this week is us yeah. embracing and using SaaS. We believe it's very powerful, the language, but R and Python, right? bringing the optionality to our customers so they can get time to value faster based on the languages or you know, the tools that they're used to using. And this partnership is yeah. one example of that. And, and Dipti, you, you've been an entrepreneur, you've seen it. So you can see opportunities, not just out on the streets in the wild as a startup entrepreneur, but inside a big company. Absolutely. You could make, you could fix one feature of an app and change the nature of that app, whether it's lowering costs or even driving revenue, or both, mm -hmm. and you don't need to be like a coder. <laughs> so opportunity capture, what's your vision on Absolutely. how do you see this? I mean, the game has changed, right? Uh, and you could say that three more times. Uh, the number of uh, capabilities you can build today in days, not years, in days with Gen AI and with the tools we have today is just phenomenal. And so, you know, on the one hand, you would think it's, it's harder to, uh, you know, uh, build and grow, but on the other hand, there's a lot to innovate on. Uh, the good news is, like, with partnerships like this, we're making it super easy for customers, for, uh, for startups, all the way to large enterprises, uh, to build new experiences uh, for their customers and do it, do it much more um, smoothly, uh, less effort, hopefully lower costs, uh, and um, with less resources, right? So productivity is a big part of it. Huge productivity gains, um, you can innovate faster. Um, and, and the scale of it, right? Um, you, you can, you, 
with, with cloud scale, you can start off small, but you, yeah. you have the ability to grow as large as you would uh, and be ambitious to be. Easy to experiment. I'm, I'm glad you brought up low code and then something that you talk about all the time, uh, boring but important governance. So you got the power platform, right? So you, you're knocking down the low code story. And then uh, governance is, is, is it purview that you guys have? That's, That's your right. governance That's right. capability? How does that fit into all this? Yeah, so purview and governance is a big part of data, right? Mm -hmm. So Microsoft Fabric has built in uh, governance, but we integrate very deeply with Microsoft Purview as well um, to give customers uh, that entire platform, right? A complete unified platform with advanced, advanced capabilities. So whether it's you know, metadata or all the way to lineage, um, uh, advanced lineage across all these workloads that we're talking about, uh, any, any change to your data can be tracked. Uh, and that's really important, especially you know, from a security cyber perspective. Uh, the world is changing on that front too, and uh, providing um, you know, a, a, a nice, secure governance tier on top of Fabric, so that our, even as partners come in into that ecosystem and operate, we are actually creating a much more secure and governed platform for everyone, so it becomes really important. Uh, Fabric has uh, what we call One Security, which applies across the platform. And, uh, and it will apply to our partners. So as the SaaS experiences come in, uh, they will uh, use and leverage the one security that we you know, have built in. Uh, and so this is what really truly makes it a, an end-to-end -end unified platform where you have Gen AI built in, you have semantic models, uh, you have uh, pipelines, right? You have real-time analytics, uh, and we have the power of our ecosystem uh, you know, coming in, we're opening up this platform through SDKs, and that's where you can envision uh, a single experience for um, our partners and us together. And, and just fast forwarding, maybe maybe it's a couple of years, transactions as well? Uh, or I, I think for now, let's leave it as unified analytics platform. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to get into any trouble here, right? <laughs> you know? Okay, Dave, but I, I mean, Dave's just, poking uh, the bear, come well, on. But I mean, you, know. you can envision uh -huh. People, places, and things, and new Absolutely. new systems yeah. coming together. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we saw right. a lot it's of things. Real not, time. We saw on Twitter a lot of controversy. People saying the modern data stack is dead. I mean, <laughs> yeah. okay, well, it was it was not modern. It was modern for two seconds and then it <laughs> became people, dead. People talk Long live the modern about, data stack. But people talking a lot about digital twins. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You yeah. hear that term now yes. much more than than you used to. A digital representation yes. of your business. Yes. Different different data types. Different data formats. That's right. SaaS obviously plays a part of that. Yeah. There's the analytic systems of record, and someday I mean, I, transactions are going to well, be there. Again, this yeah. is a big debate area. Again, you, you, will, you will get in trouble. You work at Microsoft. <laughs> you know, stick to your messaging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but it's okay to riff a little bit, and, one thing, and I'd love to get your yes. thoughts on this, because yes. the, what's coming out of the market that we're seeing is that, and I said this a while ago, Dave, we, uh, that no one can, it's hard to own the data layer, okay, as a vendor or a supplier, if you own other things or a new player might emerge and own that data layer, or control plane and the semantic layer, or no one owns it. Yeah. Okay, and so what's happening is that data is only as good as the person valuing it. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder, the workload. So I, we're seeing like this layer that has to be kind of open, that supports the open. So what do you guys see that? It has to be intelligent. How does this roll forward? What's the, what are the prerequisites for a CISO, a CIO, an app developer, the people that are really going to have to get in and, yeah. and re-look at these things, these workloads, to make it so that it's highly available, okay? It um, hits low latency SLAs, yeah, I mean, and I'm, it's the right data. Format agnostic. That's right. And what are the, what are the <laughs> multiple query types? I mean, right. it's just, we, are we they there? want you guys to take care of all that, you technologists. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Exactly, yeah. just give it our uh, way. Yeah. And, and you know, we touched on interoperability, and that's the most important part. We, yeah. There was so much vendor lock-in with, with databases and you know, appliances and all of those things that we saw. So interoperability is key. You know, for us, we have to consume and be able to store data where our customers want, right? We're not dictating that. But for me, at a higher level, I'm glad we're talking about data again, because it became unfashionable for a number of years, and there was a whole bunch of bad practices around data. Not talking about necessarily security and things like yeah. that, but data quality, data integration, data yeah. governance, a little bit of what you mentioned. I mean, 
go ahead and go train your generative AI models on, on bad data and let's see the results, right? So I'm, I'm glad that we're back to having this conversation again because it's a critical point for enterprises. Yeah, yeah and you guys pointed out last year, just to give you guys props on this, kudos, because Brian said, you guys, your top four verticals are pretty much regulated industries, pretty much, and they have to have data quality and data hygiene. Mm -hmm. And so people who have done the work are actually in pole position with the gen AI wave, they have this short term lead out of the gate. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, I mean, look, the foundation of it is this disaggregation that's happened, right, of, of storage and compute. With this, with the storage tier, can, uh, your data can sit anywhere. Uh, with one lake, uh, we, we hope your data is on Azure, but we know that you probably might have some on S3 and you might have some on GCS. Well, guess what? You could shortcut this data into one lake, let it sit where it is, and just link it into one lake and, and have a unified platform, right? <laughs> now you got me started. Because you're right, the modern data stack is separated compute from storage, but now we're basically separating data from, from compute, uh, where, where any compute can go that's get right. the data. And that is, that's, that's yeah. a big win for customers. That's yep. Because today right. I can only operate on, on the compute of whether it's, I'm an AWS or I'm exactly. an Azure, and in the future, that's right. with things like Iceberg, I'm going to be able to bring any compute yeah. to any data, yeah, on, and that's, that's what right. the customers want. Yeah, on one lake you could run multiple different engines, yeah. you could bring in your own libraries, right? You can bring in your own code. Uh, we, are, we are welcoming all our partners uh, into Fabric and for, so that their, their workloads can run on one lake. You can interrupt with one lake even just uh, links, uh, you know, using these shortcuts without using Fabric, right? So data is where it starts. You can build on that, pick the right engine. Um, we have our native workloads, and we hope to have you know hundreds more on top of Fabric uh, natively. I know I get, you got me going. No, no, she's got to get in super cloud okay, stuff. Okay, really quick. <laughs> but a unif unified metadata model and a semantic layer that that That's makes right. all these different data types coherent, and that enables uh, co-pilots to take action, transactions, and, <laughs> and, and become ag <laughs> and become agents. <laughs> We're not talking about any specific roadmap. <laughs> right, I'm just uh, envisioning the future. Yes, We're not absolutely. under NDA, so we can say, we can speculate all we the want. Good, the good news is the future is bright. <laughs> <laughs> the right, best is yet to come. Us. That's right. right. <laughs> if we had more time, I'd get a couple more questions in. But the last question to end the segment, Gavin Dipti. Um, what's next in the partnership? You kind of hinted to lighting something up with <laughs> these guys at SAS relative to the, being a design partner. Gavin, we heard Bill is around the corner. Um, obviously you guys had a multi-year relationship. Yep. Uh, that, yep. Sure that's going to go forward. What's next in yeah, the partnership? I, I, Give us, tease us with a little bit of specifics. Yeah, I mean, we're going to show some pretty cool demos tomorrow on stage of, of um, you know, Decision Builder and then as we said, there's a number of events coming where, um, I think Dipti said it right, stay tuned. But yeah, there, <laughs> there is, this is the first of many from a, a co-engineering perspective that we have across all the different aspects of, of the Microsoft ecosystem and with us at SAS. So, um, as Dipti said, the future is bright. We have a co-engineering that meets and works together daily on this partnership, side yeah. by side. Yeah, and we're sticking uh, with our cues here, <laughs> right, Captain? <laughs> um, but uh, actually we're really excited about getting this into the hands of our joint customers. Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure that these experiences um, really benefit uh, from a time perspective that it takes them uh, minutes, if it stays, if it's hours, if it's weeks, uh, and really get feedback and iterate on it, right? Mm -hmm. um, we see this as the beginning. Uh, it's just the beginning. There is so much more that we can build on top. I mean, just we, like we've talked about with yep, co-pilots yep. and all of these other things. Um, very exciting times, and uh, yeah, looking forward to build, um, and uh, stay tuned. <laughs> Great to see you, and I want to say congratulations on your exit of your startup to Microsoft. <laughs> they got a big win, congratulations. And Gavin, as always, great to have you on. Too. Love the operational focus of data and the roadmap you guys have and the partnership. It looks like it's going to be a big ecosystem yeah. opportunity for you guys. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you guys again for being All here. Right. Great. Okay, thank I'm John so Furrier with Dave Vellante. You're watching theCUBE. We're going to be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>